Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Yale number 380N605. This is a latch bolt that is used on the uh, Yale uh, 5300 series locks, 5300LN in fact. Okay, This is a deadlocking latch bolt that is uh, noticed here, this deadlocking tab, in a, in, a, in a correct installation, the deadlocking tab is held retracted back, and then you can't depress the latch bolt. You can't, uh, the term is Lloyd. You can't Lloyd the latch bolt. In an improper installation, you'd be able to push that all the way back, but that deadlocking tab is meant to be held um, back when the door is closed, the latch bolt itself will fall into the strike plate, but that deadlocking tab needs to be held back and not permitted to fall into the strike plate, uh, into the hole in the strike plate. Um, this is a two and three eighths back set. Nowhere on here will this measure two and three eighths. In a cylindrical lock, back set is measured from the edge of the door to the center of the hole, um, and you know th there's more than you know. There are there are many back sets that are available, you know, technically. Um, this 5300, your options would be two and three eighths or two and three quarter. But Yale has locks that are three and three quarter, five inch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. With extensions, you can manufacture lots of different back sets. But for that series, we're dealing with a um, two and three eighths or two and three quarter. This is two and three eighths. It's probably going to measure about an inch and three eighths from the edge of the plate to the back of the chassis, or about an inch and a half. Um, and when you measure your door, if you're not sure which one you need, that hole is going to be either about two and a half, or it's going to be quite clearly more than two and a half. And that's kind of the rule of thumb that I use. Two and three eighths or two and three quarter. We'll include a couple of combination wood machine screws in a complementary finish, uh, 832 with a Phillips drive on them. Uh, let's switch to the screen view where we can take a look at the supporting documentation, namely the catalog for this lock, so that we can look and see what other options and latch bolts are available. Oh, actually, before we do that, because we're going to talk about options, this is two and a quarter tall, and this is one inch, one inch wide. Okay, let's switch to that uh, screen view now. Okay, so this is the item that we're looking at here. Uh, not a lot to see here. Two and three eighths back set for the 5300LN. The 605, that refers to polished brass or bright brass. Um, okay, now supporting documentation. A link to the manufacturer's page here. Let's pull that up and then open up the product catalog that's there. And then we're going to do a find function on our keyboard for 380N. And we're going to certainly find the instances where that latch bolt occurs in the catalog. Now this client, this client in particular, is a, I'm not sure if he's a handyman or if he's helping a neighbor, but this client in particular has an acquaintance of theirs, a widow, and the widow's husband was a lock uh, manufacturer sales rep. I believe he actually worked for Yale um, and the widow is left with some some lock sets. Well the widow has a grade 1 5407 function, a 5400 series grade 1 lock in an LF or Litchfield knob design in a 10 finish or satin bronze. Well here it is. That's a grade 1 knob lock. The widow, wa this latch bolt that she has is two and three quarter, okay? She wants to use this lock because, well, she's a widow and doesn't have money, doesn't want to spend money, already owns a lock, doesn't see the reason to spend money, and I agree with all of that. The point is she has this for free. The point also is this lock is really expensive when it was manufactured, and we can pull up the price list and while the 5400 lock is not going to be in here as a knob because it is discontinued, the list price on the lever version in 2020 or 2019 in a satin bronze finish is $607.
we could we could all agree that the list price on this lock would be within that ballpark let's say five hundred dollars so she has an epically valuable lock so the locks discontinued therefore we can't get any parts or latch bolts uh, certainly I contacted Yale and they told me that the 5300 latch will work on this chassis there which is how we now are working on this 5300 the grade 2 version um, knob okay so uh, so the th the 5300, the 380 N is our latch bolt. Here it is for a 5300 knob or lever. Um, okay, so as we're at our catalog, um, it shows up seven seven times in the book. The 5300 series, it has uh, three mentions, and then in the LN series it has four mentions well actually three mentions as well so in the 5300 series which is the knob trim forgive me we got a 380n which is our latch two and three eighths with a one inch wide face half inch throw and a seven eighths latch diameter that means the diameter of the body itself the diameter of this body seven eighths of an inch so that's all really important. You'll see that this lap, the 5300 is available in three back sets, two and three eighths, two and three quarter, and three and three quarter. Um, three and three quarter is certainly uncommon, but it's not unheard of. Um, received an order for a three and three quarter latch bolt just two days ago, in fact, for a Yale lock. Um, what you do need to be mindful of is that the latch throw is half inch. So if you're installing this onto a fire rated door be mindful of what the label says on your door uh, on your on your fire door it will say min for minimum min latch throw and you'll want to be really sure that you have that all accurate um, meaning that you observe that minimum latch throw so likely the most common type um, the most common latch will be the 380 AN because it's two and three quarter with the inch and an eighth. That'll be typical for hollow metal doors and frames, uh, etc. Another instance of it uh, is a reference down in the footer of how to order a lock. And then again, in an ordering example, it asks, it shows you how to order the material given the um, where to place the latch bolt. Meaning when you order an entire lock set, they need to know how many, what trim design, the function, the handing, what latch you want because we just discovered there were six options what strike you want there's plenty of options what cylinder you want if it's keyed how thick the door is and what is the finish all oh, that's super important to know um, they state that the front is universal what that means is the faceplate is permitted to um, pivot slightly so that the door regardless of it being square edged or beveled edge that latch plate will accommodate either condition okay it will basically pivot uh, on the door and I'll, I'll, uh, on the face of the latch and I'll demonstrate that to you in a moment um, and there you go uh, obviously going to be available in all of the finishes to match your lock And since we're talking about latch bolts, you can also see that they have extensions that are here. Um, so in addition to the three listed here back sets, you can also get to a six inch. Um, and then be mindful that you can add these extension links together to make a longer back set. And that's not very common nowadays, but mid, mid 20th century, the 1950s and 60s, you regularly saw five inch back sets 12 inch back sets you saw locks in the center of a three foot door and they achieved that by <laughs> I've had customers called me and said you know I was pulling the latch bolt out and I just kept pulling and pulling and pulling yeah because they had a series of these links all stacked together the downside of that is that you will have a substantial amount of spring resistance when you rotate the trim 
because you've got a lot of springs that are in there. But if you want your knob centered in your door, you can certainly have it, and that's how it's accomplished. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Okay, so wrapping up this video, that's that floating faceplate. I said pivot or swivel. The term really is floating, is how that works. It floats to accommodate. Um, nice quality polished brass uh, latch face. This is labeled here, which is visual evidence that this is approved for use on fire doors. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus on that label. Under the scrutiny of a fire door audit, it would be considered typical practice that the fire door inspector will be looking for those labels. Um, it would not be important, it would not be necessary to remove the lock off the door because the face of that latch bolt gives us the indication that it is indeed approved for use on a fire rated door. It has the UL stamp there. I have a lot of luck getting that camera to focus. There we go. It has a capital letter F. It has a 356G, that's the listing. And all of that, um, all of that information colludes to tell you that this is a latch appropriate or, or permissible for use on a fire door. Um, you know, that link to the manufacturer's page uh, down below. Let's switch back to the camera view and take a look at that. Now, the reason that the link to the manufacturer's page here is important is because it will allow us to, uh, allow me to point out to you where we have some important information. So on that page, you'll find not only all of the Yale products that we sell, okay, but a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. The gallery that's here is fun. It's just a collection of odd, unassociated, random Yale photographs just from, you know, out and about, so to speak. Um, someone may email or call us and say, it's exactly the one you have in this picture, and that helps us kind of narrow down. Even though I do try to title these pictures, I don't always have the ability to do that. So the important thing about the Yale page in particular is that we have all these ar archival catalogs. You want to see what Yale was manufacturing in the late 19th century? You can do that. You want to see their 1889 catalog? Have at it. Um, Yale is a company that uh, was founded about the mid-19th century. Linus Yale Jr., in fact, literally invented the modern pin tumbler cylinder. And while it's, quite, it's, it's understood within the locksmithing industry, he did not invent the idea. Um, the Egyptians from 4,000 years ago have a lock technology that is, is basically what we use today. But Linus Yale patented his modern pin tumbler cylinder, and it revolutionized the way in which your key works within your lock. They were lever tumbler locks prior to pin tumbler locks. And when the pin tumbler lock was brought into the mix, it was a, and I don't, I, I, I don't know, I'm not saying it wasn't, I'm saying I don't know if it was fully appreciated how much of an absolute tidal change it was in the development of our locks. And this is what I'm scanning to look at. I don't know that this is the original patent drawing, but this is, in effect, what it was. That was what was called a feather key. It's a key. It's a feather key because it's quite thin. Um, and what you'll notice is that the keyway um, is just an open slot. Um, nowadays, we'll nowadays, we'll certainly have keyways that are called paracentric, and the term paracentric simply means you have a keyway but that keyway in your lock, for lack of, you know, artistic skill, is going to look like that. That's the keyway in your face of your cylinder. Wow. Okay, more more like that, right? Paracentric means that the 
keyway itself literally crosses the vertical center line of the keyway multiple times, making it uh, rendering the term paracentric appropriate. Um, that's a pretty easy keyway to pick. <laughs> paracentric uh, profiles give us a little more of a challenge, of a, 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 a substantially a greater challenge when picking the lock. So that 1889 catalog actually speaks about um, Linus Yale Jr. Um, and his work. Uh, so interesting there. So is it important to you? Probably not. But if you have a Yale closer from the 1930s, you might want to take a look at that catalog from 1937. Now let's wrap up this video on camera. In conclusion, uh, Yale is a company that has been in business for about 170 years. They're owned by the, uh, and under the umbrella of Asa Abloy, who is a multinational, multi-billion dollar corporation uh, that is uh, Yale's um, uh, American sister companies would be Corbin Russwin, Sargent, Medico, Rockwood, McKinney, Adams Wright, uh, HES, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, their international uh, sister companies would be ASA, would be Abloy. These are names that are quite synonymous with high security cylinders. Now Yale and Sargent and Medico, especially Medico, can, you know, Medico's entire business is high security cylinders, but their sister companies um, are also pillars in the evolution of high security cylinders. The Abloy uh, Protec cylinder is quite a fascinating cylinder in that it doesn't have any pin tumblers or lever tumblers or tumblers at all. It has discs and the concept is similar to how a safe lock works in the sense that you have to rotate the dial to get movement. Well all of these discs of which there are several, 11 I believe, have cuts on the inside of the disc but those cuts always change. Those cuts are related to the way in which the key is cut and the angles at which, and the depth, the depth and the angles at which the key is cut. So that when you insert this really odd looking key and you rotate it, those angles and the depth of those, the depth of the cuts and the angles of those cuts of which there are several options of each depth and of each angle will then conspire to turn all of those discs with the proper key in alignment so that the locking bar or control bar can fall, can rest into the gate, permitting further turning of the cylinder. It's highly fascinating. Um, the ASA is an interesting high security cylinder in that it has this beautiful design of a sidebar um, and it has sidebar pins and that when the proper key is inserted, you have to satisfy not only the traditional shear line, but the shear line of the sidebar and its side bit milling. Um, so that's a fascinating lock. And that's all, you know, under that Asa Abloy um, umbrella. Anyway, I've digressed. Time to say thank you. My name is Rich Howard. Any questions on the Yale 380N and a 605 or any finish or any other Yale commercial product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.